In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint ballerina figures with watercolor. The supplies I'm using are just cold pressed watercolor paper, this size 6 low Cornell ultra round brush, and the color is Payne's Gray by Daniel Smith. So the first thing I wanted to say is I always use a reference photo. I think it's more helpful to see something um, and have something of reference. So if you want to see the reference photos that I used for these three figures, then I will link them in the description and you can check them out there. Um, the reason why I do this is because I don't trust myself to remember the proportions, honestly, but it's really important for me to be able to look back at some Thing, like a photo because I think that painting figures is um, easy to mess up because we're humans and the figure is very familiar to us so anything that's a little bit off we can see um, very very quickly even if we can't tell somebody exactly what looks strange it just kind of looks off and so I like to use reference photos so in these figures I always start with the head and then I move to the arms the torso and then obviously the waist if there's like a tutu and then I will also paint the legs and then down to the feet and the last thing I paint is the shadow in this first one I actually forgot to paint a shadow so you won't see that but in this second one I do and um, I'm going to walk you through the second one I have tips that you can kind of keep in mind as you're painting these figures and the first one is to make sure you leave white spaces and little gaps so you are painting quickly but not so quickly that um, you're filling in all of the areas so there's a little bit of thoughtfulness that comes in here when I'm doing these for myself and that's when you are taking a look at where there's breaks or um, changes in um, areas of the painting so for example if this arm is overlapping a torso I'll leave a little bit of gap so that you can see the separation between the two elements um, another place that I tend to skip and leave gaps is at joints, so elbows um, and wrists, hands, ankles, those kinds of areas. So you can kind of see me doing that here. And leaving those white gaps is going to suggest a lot more than you may think it would. So because these are really abstract and simple, we are relying on leaving gaps um, of white space in order to suggest movement, suggest breakpoints, and suggest changes in texture, things like that. And so I just want to remind you that when you're painting these, that um, sometimes you can't think too much about it. Sometimes you're just going off of movement and intuition based on what you see from the reference photo. At least that's how I do it. Painting the shadows is also similar. It's not an exact shadow. It's not calculated or technical. It's just a hint or... Um, a suggestion of a shadow to ground this figure in the painting. And so again, in this last one, um, you can see that when I get to places where there's a costume, um, I'll leave tiny little gaps of white to suggest fabric. And then um, especially in the tutu or the, the skirt parts, those are kind of my favorite parts because you can kind of free flow and just add brush strokes. Um, and you're just suggesting fabric and movement. And so I had somebody ask me how I painted these, which is what inspired me to share this in this video. And part of her question was, did you make any mistakes and did you practice this? And yes, I made a lot of mistakes. So if you're doing this for the first time, I just want to encourage you to know that you're probably going to mess up and it's not going to turn out right the first time. I've painted a bunch of these by now. And so... That's why I was able to capture these three on video, but definitely off camera, there was a lot of mistakes. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to see more like this. And if you're on social media, feel free to follow me at Ray and Lily on Instagram and Facebook. See you next time.